As someone who appreciates the history and backstory of toys, it's become something of a pastime for me to go and research the wealth of information surrounding the various characters on my toy shelves. Simply put, I find the predecessor tie-ins to figures from our childhood something of a fascinating ongoing research project. When the Transformers were released in 1984, the original Generation 1 series consisted of 18 Autobots, all of whom took an automobile alternate mode in one form or another. This video focuses on one of the two Lamborghini figures released that year, namely Sideswipe. Let's begin. I've done previous videos before that relate to the topic of this video, namely one detailing the acquisition of Diaclone Battle Convoy which was the predecessor basis for Optimus Prime, as well as an evolution of toys video covering my various Soundwave figures beginning with the vintage release and culminating in the masterpiece and modern renditions. So have a look at those two videos on my channel's back catalog if you get some time. I figured this would be a good opportunity to somewhat combine the aforementioned two concepts, beginning with a look at Sideswipe's Diaclone predecessor, the yellow Diaclone number 15 contact figure, and how that evolved into his Generation 1 as well as eventual Generation 2 appearances. I'll also do very brief comparisons to his masterpiece and modern releases just to show how they look aesthetically together. Of note, I obtained the yellow Diaclone figure from Cherry Bomb Toys at the Winter 2022 Vancouver Comic and Toy Show, another adventure of which I filmed for the purpose of this channel. If I'm being honest, I didn't want to purchase the figure solely for the purpose of it being rare, but because I found it neat that the red sideswipe I was familiar with in my youth was now in a yellow color akin to that of his car brother Sunstreaker's color scheme, of course with the sideswipe mold, I thought that was a pretty interesting thing to obtain for myself. This yellow Diaclone was released after the original red Diaclone release, so this yellow one was put out to market in late 1983 in Japan and also in 1984 in Italy under the company Gig, ahead of the Generation 1 Transformers toy line and eventual Sunbow cartoon. As mentioned in my Battle Convoy video, the Diaclone storyline consisted of non-sentient robots along with their pilots, and this figure indeed does come with his pilot. Unfortunately, it didn't have its launcher, missiles, or his hand weapon, and that almost deterred me from picking it up. However, I noticed that this was the first time in all my years of collecting that I had the chance to pick this one up in person, and with the palatable price that was put in front of me, I realized I couldn't pass this one up. I should note that this yellow Diaclone was reissued in 2003 by Takara, this time under the name of Tiger Track, which in of itself is a desirable piece that isn't commonly found among collector circles even if it is a reissue. I do like the addition of giving him a more G1 style name, so when I look at my original 1980s Diaclone figure, I do refer to him in passing as Tiger Track even if the reissue's name was only applied later on and not in the original line. Thus, when I look at this figure, I'm reminded of the various neat color schemes that the pre-Transformers often came with, such as the enigmatic blue-blue streak that has become something of a holy grail amongst collector circles, or the black micro-change perceptor. But these are just a few examples out of many that are out there. Transitioning over, the G1 Sideswipe I have is actually a 2000s reissue by Takara. Now while most of my G1 figures are from the original 1980s releases, this is one that I bought back in the 2000s at a time when numbered reissues were coming out on a more regular basis. Now I don't have a whole lot to add about this particular figure other than the fact that he's a welcome member of my G1 Transformers Autobot cast as always. So this is a neat figure. This is actually my childhood Generation 2 Sideswipe, a figure I actually remember pulling from the pegs at a nearby store in my area called Kids Wonderland back in 1993. It is one of the figures that survived from childhood to adulthood, so there's that nostalgic attachment and connection that has followed me over the years. Now, I've forgotten how this happened, 
but whether I lost the piece and acquired the wrong replacement accessory later on, or if I happened to be at a friend's house as a kid and came back with the wrong accessory, somehow I ended up with the blue launcher that came with Generation 2 Jazz rather than the green one that Sideswipe from Generation 2 is supposed to come with. I seem to recall being a bit of an older kid at the time who could and should have taken better care of his toys, so I'm surprised that this mix-up happened, and I'm also not sure what happened to the spare missile that he's supposed to have, but hey, it's part of the story, so I'm here to tell it. But in general, it's neat to see the shift and evolution of toys from Diaclone to Generation 1 to Generation 2 Sideswipe, much in the same way that I've drawn parallels for the previous Optimus Prime video that I did. So as promised, here's a look at the vintage Sideswipe figures along with the Masterpiece MP12 Lambor by Takara, as well as the War for Cybertron released by Hasbro. For some reason, Transformers has its hooks in me to go the extra mile in terms of collecting all of vintage as well as masterpiece and mainstream modern releases. I'm not sure why I went that route, but I can only tell you that it feels organic in nature for me to do so, and in general, I haven't yet regretted taking this route. If I'm being honest, when I look back to the early 2000s, it was a fun challenge to go and hunt down the vintage Generation 1 Transformers that filled my youth of the 80s and early 90s with so much joy and excitement. Thus, when acquiring pre-Transformers, be it for Diaclone, Microman, or other toy lines, as well as the modern and masterpiece renditions, I find myself recreating the excitement in a twofold manner. The first is the childhood exhilaration of finding the figures on store pegs when the vintage figures were released and recreating that experience, and the second is experiencing the challenges of being a young adult with an extremely limited income 20 years ago when slowly filling my shelves and recreating my collection with these timeless robot characters. In the end, hopefully I was able to articulate the story of these acquisitions for all of you out there as an audience. Like I always say, the acquisition of any rare figure is all the more special if there's a story to go along with it or an attachment that goes deeper beyond the achievement factor of just finding something rare. And while finding a rare piece is exciting, I personally find in my experience that the accomplishment factor is short-lived unless my connection to the toy extends to something sentimental. It's the entire reason that I make videos such as this one. Okay, and with that, that's a wrap for this video. I'd just like to give a special thanks and shout out to my Patreon supporters whose names can be found in the description below. Please visit patreon.com slash toy connections for early access to videos, bonus content, and other benefits. And if you enjoyed this video, please click on some of my other content here. Subscribe to this channel if you already haven't, press that like button to spread this video to more viewers, and share it with your friends. Otherwise, I will see you again soon with some more of my favorite toys. Have a good one, and take care.